Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God is so good. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I I am Joe T. Wallace, glory to God, Bishop Elect. Welcome to this TV broadcast. Praise the Lord, God bless you, how are you today? Oh, God is good, yes he is, I'm telling you, the Lord is so merciful and kind to us, and I thank the Lord on this day, this is the day the Lord has made. To all of you out there, I'm telling you, God is good, isn't he? Yes, he is. Well, look, first I want to tell you that I welcome you to, the, to this broadcast. I thank God for you coming today. I want you to know that uh, the Lord has great things in store for us this day. Amen. And I want you to know that this in this month of um, coming up in December, right now, this month of December, do you know that a lot of times people um, get real, they get sad because of the things that's happening, the pressures of life and all the things that they have to do. And I want you to know something. Listen, you got to have a stress-free life. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter, amen, what's going on, you need to have a stress-free life. Yes, you do, because God is good. Yes, he is. Well, look, today I just want to speak to you about something today. Uh, I'm dealing with some things, glory to God, out of my book. Yes, uh, seeing through the eye of faith, glory to God. This is a great book, I'm telling you. I never really had a chance to teach out this book, and it's so powerful. And, and I want you to know all the things that I talk about are experiences that I've had uh, in this book. As a matter of fact, I have it on the, on the back cover. Seeing through the eye of faith is a true accounting, it's a true accounting of the events that happened in Pastor Wallace's life and ministry. Pastor Wilder, I hope that you will read this book, open your heart, give you a greater knowledge of God's power and never-ending love. It's so important for us to know how God loves us, regardless of who we are, what we do. God loves us. He loves you. Yes, he does, my friend. God loves you. Well, let's get into this book. Uh, it's 13 chapters, and wow, so many things is going on. I, I just want to take one at a time uh, so that um, just if I can give some account of what really took place. You know, I, I dedicated this book to my mother and father, Frank and Earlene Wallace, who raised me at an early age going to church every Sunday. And uh, whether it's rain or shine, they taught me to do things the right way, as parents should. Um, also, they taught me how to have respect for adults and teach me the hard work and the goals of stand nothing to stand in the way of my destiny, you know, and I, I couldn't have told you that I'd be in this position today, amen, back then, but, you know, uh, I'm glad that, that God chose me, yes, I'm so glad, God is so good, and I'm glad that God chose me, glory to God, to be the person that I am today, amen, he said, hey, I know you, in your mother's womb, I formed you, hallelujah, <laughs> well, listen, I want to just uh, do an introduction and let's go into one of the stories. Um, when we look at the, in this Bible, as Hebrews 11 and 1, we see a lot more than what it says. God has given me more revelation uh, according to this. Um, the Bible says, now faith, Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, seeing things through the spirit of the Holy, uh, Holy Ghost, uh, there is a time that you can get a greater understanding of what God is doing for you and, and others. And um, what I love about God is how our hope and existence of things to come are in the unseen. And our faith brings it to the reality of where we are now. One of the stories I like to talk about is one 12 hours to live. That's one of the first ones I want to talk about this. I used to be a sheriff's chaplain. So one day I got a call, and this is a true story, I got a call um, that one of the sheriff's sisters was um, dying in the hospital, 
and they wanted someone to give her last rites. You know, this is uh, hard to do when you see a person leaving here. It wasn't the first person that, uh, that was connected to the Sheriff's Department that I had a chance to visit and, and um, give last rites. This particular time, though, um, they wanted me up before she passed away. They gave her 12 hours to live. And it's one of the hospitals right here in the city of Detroit. And so I made my way. And, um, but as I, I went, there were some things that I was praying about, asking God, things I needed to do. I wanted to make sure that um, I was in total agreement with the word of God as I went to pray for this lady, even though they had uh, shut the machines off, they had pulled everything out, all the IVs, and they had pushed her to the corner of the room. And that was she was supposed to just go away in 12 hours. And I went to the room and her parents met me and I told them who I was and, and they welcomed me in the room and, and um, of course it was real somber in there. And one of the things I, I wanted to, to make sure was that I was in compliance to what they wanted and I asked, could I uh, pray for her? And, and I had some blessed oil with me and I said, is it all right if I anoint her head with this blessed oil and pray for her? And I also said this to them, I know I'm here to give the last rites but I want to give her the rights to the tree of life. Oh my God, such a powerful statement. They said, uh, chaplain, you may go and do that. And so I proceeded to, to pray and, um, and I was moved by the Lord to pray that God would have mercy upon our soul and that reverse the situation mm. and no matter what the outcome would be I had faith to know that God was able to do it and so I went in prayer I laid hands in the name of the Lord because the Bible says any sick among you call for the elder of the church they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and I had enough faith to believe that God could change the situation even though she had 12 hours to live do you know that as I prayed, and I see my notes as I prayed, it says that I anointed her with oil and asked God to heal her and let her live and not for me to be there to give her last rites. And I petitioned God. You know, the Bible says the prayer of a righteous person, no matter who it is, availeth much. And I know that I had been fasting and praying and asking God to help me to be the person that he wanted me to be. And I listen, when it's time to go to heaven for a miracle, let me tell you something, you've got to be in position. God is so merciful to us. And so I prayed for her and, and then I, I, after a few minutes of praying, um, I felt her move and I prayed even more. Now, I tell you, when I was praying for her, I didn't have my eyes open um, because I didn't want any distractions. And I, I, I was praying, and I was praying real hard and believing God and speaking life over this situation. And then I heard the parents say, she's opened her eyes. And I kept praying, and I prayed till God released me from praying for her. And let me tell you something, when I took my hands off her, I was so drained, all I could do was fall back in the chair. Amen. And glory to God. And you know what happened? That young lady had opened her eyes and I fell in a chair and she, when she opened her eyes and she turned her head towards me, she didn't know who I was. And, and her mother at this time was at her bedside and said, this is the chaplain. He's come here to pray for you from the sheriff's department. Your brother works. And she smiled at me. Oh my God, look at that. I'm telling you the truth. What a blessing in that. Well, she couldn't talk, but she smiled. Glory to God. That was enough for me right there. <laughs> I was blown away. It was like, Lord, you're doing a wonderful job, a wonderful work right here 
in this room, in this hospital. Well, um, I left, eventually I left, and uh, they had called the, the nurses and everybody back into the room, uh, and they were amazed because she was supposed to check it out. Amen. But God gave her a renewed life and a renewed spirit. And so I came back in two days. Um, of course, I kept up to make sure everything was going well. In two days, I came back. And the Bible says that, that, you know, when you move by faith, when you believe God, amen, you will move by what you believe. Amen. Amen. That's something that you need to do. Whoever you are, you need to know that when you believe God, for you have the faith to trust him, you will move in that direction because you know God is going to take care of you. Amen. Yes, he will. So I went back uh, in a few days and, and I saw that God had healed her. Lord, have mercy. Because seeing through the eye of faith, I saw her healed and not dead. Amen. Um, we know plenty of instances in the Bible where Jesus went in and he, he did what he had to do. Glory to God. And so when you are in a place and you're looking for something great from God, it's important to elevate your faith and trust in God. Yes, that's what you have to do. And you know when I went back to the hospital, do you know what she was doing? When I walked in the room, the nurses were saying, oh, here he comes. That's the, that's the uh, preacher that prayed for her. That's the miracle man. I said, whoa, no, no, not me. I, I represent the miracle worker, amen, whose name is Jesus. I want you to know that. Glory to God. So what happened? I walked in the room. This girl was eating dinner just like it was uh, Thanksgiving. Hello. Oh, my goodness gracious. She was enjoying life. Oh, man. We had a quick conversation. And we talked for a minute, and I'll tell you something. What a glorious time we had in that room. I got a chance to talk, see some more about who she was and everything that transpired. And You know, I was just blown away. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, uh, let me turn here, uh, 13 and 8. Hebrews 13 and uh, 13 chapter 8 verse tells us this, that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Well, he did it in the Old Testament. Uh, Jesus did it. Amen. The power of God operated in the Old Testament, and Jesus applied it in the New Testament. And I want you to know something, that when you see yourself uh, talking about something you need from God, a, a great miracle from God, God is able to do it. And all you do is remind yourself, Jesus did it while he was walking the earth. I want you to know something. Having great faith and seeing through the eye of faith is very important. Why? If you want miracles, signs, and wonders, you need to know that the Lord Jesus Christ, because he did it in the New Testament, he's still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Well, look, I'm going to take a break, amen, and I'll come back and talk to you after the break, all right? Here's our commercial announcer. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Abundant faith. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you. How are you? You know, this is this is Bishop Elect Joe T. Wallace. Glory to God. Pastor of Abundant Faith Cathedral in the city of Detroit. We thank God for everything he has been doing. And I want to tell you something. If you're going through something today, illness, whatever it might be, when the doctors give up, I can tell you God is a miracle worker. Listen, we've had so many miracles right here in this place. You know something? Cancer has been healed. Yes. We had a woman, glory to God, ever since she was in her 20s, she was having seizures and now she's in her 70s. Can I tell you something? She's been with us about 10 years. 
And she came in, she had one seizure. And I said, no more, no to the seizure. And I prayed for her and I told God to heal her. She had not had another seizure. She don't even take seizure medicine. Wow. Listen, there's so many things that God still want to do today. And you know what? All it takes is you to have some faith and trust God. Because the Hebrew writer said that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Why don't you trust God today? You know why? Because he's still in the miracle working business. God has been good. He's been good to you. Tumors have been healed. Oh yeah, there's been so many things God healed. I remember praying for a young man that had a tumor in his chest. It was so large, it was sticking out. Glory to God. And I prayed for him on a Sunday. He went back to the doctor on Tuesday. Can I tell you something? It was gone, dissolved. God had healed it. Whatever you might need, God is the answer. If you're here, you need to call. You need to come. Allow me to lay hands on you. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Because he still answers prayer. We call this place Wonder Faith Cathedral. The worship center, God's house of miracles. We want you to know the Lord is strong in this place. Come so you can get a healing. God is waiting on you. Please come. Please call. If you can't make it, if you're too far, you're in another city, give me a call. I'll pray with you over the telephone. Yes, the word goes out and obtain that what it wants to go out and do. Whatever God sends that word, glory to God, he's going to watch over it according to the book of Jeremiah. And he is going to perform what his word says. We have faith, we trust God. Just give us a call right here at the worship center. I'll pray for you, glory to God, and you will have a testimony too, that you had it, but God took it away. Bless you today, wait for your call. Amen. Glory to God, I'm back. Listen, you know I'm talking about today um, from my book, Seeing Through the Eye of Faith. It is some of the accounts that I have witnessed, my experiences um, since I've been in ministry. Miracles, signs and wonders. Oh, there's so many great things in this, in this book. Um, I want you to know um, that we were talking about uh, 12 hours to live. You know, sometimes we get to a place in our life, uh, ladies and gentlemen, saints of the most high God, we get to a place and you know, we feel like uh, there's no tomorrow. We feel like that I'm at the end of my rope. Well, that's time, to, they say time not and hang on. Listen, let me, let me read one more scripture to you. I wanna go back to the book of Hebrews and I want to back up um, to um, 10 and uh, 35. It says, the book of Hebrews, 10th chapter 35 says this, cast not away therefore your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. Your confidence in God, no matter what happens, your confidence in God, the confidence that you have in God, that God would take care of your, your needs and your situation, the Bible says, for you have need of patience that you either have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. When you find yourself in a position like, like this young lady, nothing she can do, 12 hours to live, pushed her in the corner of the room, pulled all the IVs out, no machines, nothing. Just say she's leaving here. Everything's shutting down. Let me tell you something. When you find yourself in that position, it's important for you to know where to go. You need to go to the rock. Come on, somebody. And the rock of Christ Jesus, the rock of his word, the rock of who he is, oh my God, the rock of salvation, the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ that will bring you through anything. Doesn't matter what it is. The Lord is able to bring you through. Come on now. Why give up? Why throw in the towel? This woman could not do anything. 12 hours to live. She was on her deathbed. But you know something? Mm. 
Her parents says, if we can get a man of God in here, if we can get somebody in here, just give her the last rites. They call the right one, amen. Because all I could do is say, I'm going to introduce her to the tree of life. See, it, a lot of times we, we feel like because we, we do certain things or we feel like we, we're not, um, we, I am not, we are not, I can't be, it's not me, I've been too bad, I've been just a wretched person, there's always time for repentance. There's always time, ladies and gentlemen, that we can say, you know what? God is good to us, and irregardless to what I've been, what am I going to do, and who am I going to be later? That's why I want to tell you something. Never give up on what you're looking for God to do. Never, ever give up on God. You have to have the faith. The Bible says, cast not therefore your confidence which have great recompense of reward. Your confidence in God will be to a place, ladies and gentlemen, that God will do this thing for you. You have to have confidence. Amen. Don't throw it away. Do not throw your confidence away in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, God can do anything but fail. Oh, my God. I, I, listen, if I can just tell you, if I can just help you to get to a place where you say, you know what, I'm going to hold on to the end. You hold on to the end. She had 12 hours to live. They pushed her in a corner. They pulled all the IVs out. Wasn't no machines there. Her body was shutting down. 12 hours to live. And, and let me tell you something. Amen. When they did that, I wasn't there at that time. I had to get there because I was somewhere else. And it took me a couple of hours to get uh, to the hospital. So it wasn't 12, it was really 10 by the time I got there. But see, Time don't run out with God. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. When you're looking for God to do something great for you, you have to hold on. I know I'm talking to somebody right now. Amen. Don't throw away your confidence. Don't throw away your confidence in the word of God. Listen, yeah, people have hurt you. I know I'm talking to somebody right now. People have hurt you. People have let you down. But you know something? The Lord never lets us down. He has never, ever let us down. Sometimes we say, well, what? I'm not worthy of, of, of the Lord doing this for me. Well, who, who is worthy, really? <laughs> who is worthy? Amen. We all have things that, that go through our life, things we do, and, and, and we ask God, I need help. I really need help, Lord. I need you to help me. Amen. Uh, who is worthy? You know, I, I'm so glad mercy and grace covers us all. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Listen, if you are out there today and and, and, and your life just seems like everything's dead in your life. You need to give us a call right here, worship center. You need to call the prayer line. Call the prayer line and say, I need help from God. And we'll have somebody that will pray with you and believe with you. Listen, I'm one. I can tell you honestly, I've been there. Been there and done that. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, it's only uh, last year I was diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. Stage four. Four. You know something? I'm here today. Cancer free. God is good. Yes, I went to the doctor. Yes, I had some treatments. But you know something? I give praise to God. Because even in my, when I was having my treatments, you know what I was doing? I had some tapes playing. Glory to God. Of Kenneth and Gloria Cope. Playing in the background. Healing tapes. Oh my God. The Lord is so good to us. Cast not, the Bible says, cast not your confidence. Cast not it. Amen. Why? Because you have great recompense of reward. That means something is coming for the confidence that you have in God. Uh, 36 says, for you need a patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. When you know you're doing right, when you know you're doing what the Bible says, then the Lord will do what he says. If you feel like the lady with 12 hours to live, if you feel like her, you need to make a change in your life. Listen, if it's not dead, and even in that, God resurrected dead things. If, if, if in fact there's something dead in your life, if you feel like you've reached your last wits, that you are, listen, you're at the end of the rope, as they say, and you're tying a knot, and you're going to slip from there, you didn't give us a call. I guarantee you, God can change your situation if you have faith and you trust. 
We've had so many people come through this ministry right here at Bonifay Cathedral. People have been blessed. People have been set free. People have been healed. Glory to God. Amen. Yes, they have. Cancer have been healed. Tumors have been healed. It's just so many things God has done for the people that come through here for prayer. Well, if you say, I'm in another city, that's okay. Give us a call. I guarantee you, prayer of a righteous person availeth much. We have people that will pray for you and believe God for you. I've been in uh, many cities praying for sick. And you know something? God has healed me. What about you? Don't let your life this month go to the end and you say, I don't know what to do. I want you to give us a call right now. I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, we just thank you for the people that are watching right now. There's something going on with them. And I pray, Lord God, that you would impart on their heart and their minds, Lord, that they will ask you, Lord, to help them. I pray now that they will give us a call right here in this ministry. We thank you now for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. We say amen. Well, you can go to our website and you can see us there. Glory to God. You can go to Facebook, uh, Instagram. If you want to donate to the ministry, glory to God, you can do that uh, through our website. Listen, uh, we thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you again next week. All right? This is Bishop Elect, Joel T. Wallace, pastor of the Monday Faith Cathedral, saying bye-bye. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. God is so good. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I I am Joe T. Wallace. Glory to God. Bishop elect. This is your girl Vicky Winans and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicki Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network.